Wow, that was really good. Thanks, guys, for that. Uh, I can attest to that, that last song. It's true that Jesus actually does love us. Amen? And it's great to be a part of the family of God. It's great to be loved. It's great to be free in Christ Jesus. And it's good to be here today. And we're going to be talking about today the Sermon on the Mount, which is, I feel like it's probably the greatest, and it's not just me, I mean, it's the greatest sermon ever to be, to be taught, to be spoken. Because it's from Jesus, and the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus setting up his entire ministry that leads to the cross, that leads to our need of him, and leads to us being full of the Holy Spirit and guided by Him so that we can live out the kingdom on earth and show the world Jesus' love that we were just singing about through us. That's what this sermon is all about. The sermon isn't about conforming to a certain set of standards or trying really hard to not think and do the wrong thing. This sermon is about us being full of the Holy Spirit and guided by Jesus himself to go out and be a conduit of his love to others. Amen? It's a beautiful thing. And so last week we got the introduction to that. And we talked about that the, the big thing that he gets there is our righteousness has to exceed that of the Pharisees. Well, our righteousness, our, our self-righteousness could, could never attain to that. And it, it, we need His righteousness. And that's what the cross is all about. All of this is a progression to the, to the cross and our need of Jesus. And then us being full of Him and going out and loving the world. So, so that's our, that was our introduction last week. And this week we're going to talk about um, a murderless heart. A murderless heart. And I, I think I might have made up the word murderless. Um, so I put a hyphen in it to make... See if it, anyway, you know what it's saying, right? I think that's the whole point of, of language. So anyway, um, but, but a murderless heart here. And a couple of, of things that I want you to notice before we dive in is, number one, notice the authority that Jesus speaks with. This authority is the king's authority that he's speaking with. Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he's speaking to us as such, right? Another thing I want you to, to think about as we're going through this is that, that Christianity, being Christ followers, is not about behavior modification. It's not about gritting our teeth and trying harder to, to, to not mess up or not to, to, so, so that we can uh, uh, just not murder or not commit adultery or not do any of these things. It's about heart change and the transforming work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the sanctifying work of salvation in our hearts. It's about growth. It's about Him changing us, not about us trying harder to please Him. We don't have to please Him. Jesus Christ pleased the Father and reconciles us to Him. Therefore, it's not about us trying harder. It's about us realizing that that work's already done. And then we can be free to be full of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to live through us. So think about those, those things. It's not about behavior modification. It's about being transformed by the Creator. It's having our old heart taken out of stone, taken out, and our new heart of flesh being placed in us. Amen? And so, uh, let's, let's think about those things as we dive in. I'll tell you what. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we got a fancy new uh, uh, system here with our new... How many of you noticed the brighter projectors? If not, all one of you. I mean, it's amazing. The best part is, I've got a 70-inch TV I can look at right there. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I can read off of that thing. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And we used to have an old projector that was half crooked, but now we're, 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 we're modern. It's beautiful. And um, so, anyway, uh, I can look this way now. And I'm, I'm happy with it whether you are or not. So, all right. Here we go. Matthew chapter 5. Um, we'll, we'll back up here. We'll get to the heart of the matter. This, this is the, the first part of this. And, and we're talking about murder. Now, we're not really talking about murder. We're talking about... Well, we'll get into it. But this is the heart of the matter. So Jesus says... This is his first thing after his introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. He says, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, 
And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. I agree with that. You should not murder people. Are we in agreement with that? Amen. All right, good. If you have, we would love for you to confess, but, but bear in mind, there, there are going to be other things that happen if you do that. So, uh, But you ought not murder. You've heard it said long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be sub subject to judgment. Now that is true, but Jesus is getting to something else here. You see, it's not about the outward conformity. I've never committed murder. I've never committed murder. I, I've done a lot in my life. Murder is not one of them. Now, and I don't plan on committing murder. I don't think I'll commit murder. I know that there's uh, not a river so long that there's not a crook in it, but I don't think that I will commit murder as, 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 as we go along. But that's not what Jesus is getting at. That's not what Jesus is getting at. Let's see what he says here. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Has anyone ever been angry? <coughs> First of all, has anybody murdered anybody in here? And if you have, please don't raise your hand. <laughs> if, you, if you've done your time in your house, you know, if it was justified or not, I don't really care. But, 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 but how many of you have been angry at somebody before? Yeah, but, but how many of you have been what you felt like was righteously angry? Right? Yeah. Anger happens. Anger happens. This isn't, about, this isn't about that feeling that wells up in you where you know you need to do something. This isn't about the natural human response to injustice or the human response to unfairness or all of that. It's about how we deal with that anger. About how we deal with that anger. So, here's the thing. When, let me, let, me, let me just move on. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. Have you ever done that? You said, Raka, Doug, Raka. You know? You ever said that? No. You know what this means? It means empty headed or an idiot. How many of you have ever called somebody an idiot? I'm, I'm the world's worst at this when I'm driving. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul, except for mine, because I have to confess every single week and it gets old. But, uh, but man, I'm, I'm like, idiot, you idiot, you know? And that's so bad. That's so bad. And, and, and here's, here's the rest of it. And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. And you fool, the same word we'll get moron, too. So... You know, fool, moron, empty-headed, idiot. If we're if we're talking like that to people, and that's just the natural, regular human response to everybody. And Jesus is saying, wait a second. We have the tipping point in this part of the sermon is anger. The tipping point in this part of the sermon is anger. And I'm going to show you something here as we move forward. And it's this. Our progression as spirit-led Christ followers is not from anger to, toward murder, but rather from anger toward reconciliation. Okay? The natural human response is, when we get angry, is to progress to escalate that. And progress... Now, I'm not talking about... You're, you don't just get mad at somebody and then murder them, generally speaking. But it's a progression towards murder. Whereas when we're full of the Holy Spirit, when we get that anger, and we are going to be angry, we are going to have times of conflict, there are going to be difficulties, you don't have Jesus coming to your heart, and then everything is rosy. That's not how that works. You know, we still have the same things that come up, but our ministry now is not working toward the self-gratification of making them pay for hurting us, our progression now is toward reconciliation with our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. And it is showing them an otherworldly love that the Holy Spirit has placed in our heart because that's what Jesus did for us. We just sang that beautiful song about how our sin was what held Jesus there. But what did He do? Who were we? We were His enemies. 
We would have been there shouting, crucify him like everybody else that day. We would have pounded those nails just like those centurions did. We would have done all of that. And yet, he said on the cross to those very people, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Our ministry now is not a ministry of Trevor or us or self. Our ministry now is, is to show the world the love of Jesus. And that means we, we move from anger toward reconciliation, not from anger toward murder. Now, what do I mean by that? How many of you, and don't raise your hand again. I brought you to stop asking. Um, how many of you hold, have a grudge right now with somebody? How many of you have a grudge right now towards somebody? That is a step from anger toward murder. If you're holding a grudge against somebody today, and you're angry with somebody, and you refuse to let it go, you refuse to talk to them, you refuse to deal with it, you refuse to acknowledge them, you've shunned them, you know, you're in effect, have, have dismissed them from your lives as a murder would take place and dismiss them from life. In effect, you are taking a step from anger toward murder. That is not what Jesus did. And if anybody had a right to hold a grudge against a group of people that have done them wrong, it's Jesus Christ. But he didn't do that. He went to the cross and loved us, not because we deserved it, but because he chose to do it. And he tells us, let's go show the world that love. Let's show them the love that I've shown you. Let me show them through you the love that is, that is amazing. It is full of grace. It is full of mercy. It is unmerited. It is unconditional and irregardless. And let's move from when we're angry toward reconciliation, not grudge and not murder. Let me just encourage you today. That if you are a Christ follower and full of the Holy Spirit and you have a grudge against somebody, you are in the midst of sin. And you need to do what you can to make that right. Now, here's the thing. How else can that person see Jesus than if we don't act like Jesus? You know? You must be a lot of grudges in this room. You guys look really... <laughs> Are you mad at me? Because you need to make that right, right? <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you have a grudge, if you're angry at somebody, if it's whatever, let's, let's move toward reconciliation and show them Christ's love. And I believe we can bear that out with the rest of this passage because he starts with murder, he goes to anger, and then look what he does. If you got something wrong, if there's something wrong in between you and somebody, our greatest ministry, what we do is love Jesus, love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love each other, right? Love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what we do. That's who we are in Jesus. So, so let's look at what he says. The, check this out. The freeing, the freeing work of reconciliation. The freeing. Having a grudge against somebody and holding and harboring anger against somebody, it is, it, is a, it is labor, it is slavery, it is bondage, it hurts, it destroys. Now, check it out, what's he saying? First of all, reconciliation frees you to worship God. Look what he says here. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Right? If you're there, if you're, if you're, let's put it in Ben 2017 terms, okay? Almost 2018, that's hard to believe, right? <laughs> therefore, if you're offering your gift to the other, therefore, if you're hanging out at church, if you're at church, we'll just put it right there. If you're at church, and your brother, and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar, First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. He says, 
that if you have a if you have something against somebody or somebody has something against you, the first thing that we need to do is not come to church and give our offering and worship God and sing songs and, 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 and tell everybody how much we love Jesus. The first thing we need to do is go make that right and seek reconciliation. And then we're free to come and, and fully and, and engage in loving Jesus and loving God and worshiping Him and singing and giving our tithes and offerings and doing all of that knowing that there's nothing in between us and God. We are free because of the ministry of Jesus Christ who reconciled us to the Father and fills us with His Holy Spirit and gives us the ministry of reconciling with each other. We're free to come and worship God without anything in between or anything thing holding us down. It's not worth having anger and harboring anger toward each other. Let's make it right. Amen? Thank you. Alright. Make me feel a little better. I, I, I've got a, I, I, I'm, I'm a little insecure. you got to boost me up a little bit once in a while. Make me feel better. Alright? Amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> that's better. So, that's the first thing he says. So we go, we make that right. Now, here's, here's an aside. Some of the hard things are, are, you can only do what you can do. You can only do what you can do. You can't make somebody stop having a grudge or harboring anger toward you. You can't do that. But what you can do is know between, between you and God and every resource you have available, what you can do, you can go and make that right according to what you need to do to apologize, if you need to do something, if you need to whatever you need to do to make it right, you can just do that. And if they're still angry with you, that, that ball's in their court. That ball's in their court. That's all you can do. But you can do that. But what I tend to do, I'll say me, because I keep stepping out of the stop spotlight there. I'd hate for you not to see this. Uh, but what I tend to do is I'm all apologetic until the other person maybe isn't, and then I'm all mad again. You know what I mean? But we need to approach this like we're living for something bigger than ourselves now. The, and this is the point of this sermon. The Creator has come. We, we have the benefit of looking back toward this sermon through the lens of the cross. They, they weren't there yet when the sermon was given. But when we look back, this sermon... As we look through it through the lens of the cross and the Holy Spirit living in us, we are called to something bigger. God has chosen to allow us to be the hands and feet and the body of Christ here on earth so that we can show that same love that stuns us, that amazes us, that blew us away, that Jesus showed us on the cross by loving us in spite of the fact that we were sinners and we did Him wrong. We have the same opportunity to love others unconditionally regardless of what they've done to us. That can be hard, that can be difficult, but the Holy Spirit is living in us. The same Holy Spirit that say that 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 was that Jesus is who he is, that same Holy Spirit that, that led Jesus to the cross to live, love us and, and and change us and transform us is at work in us so that we can love others through Him the way He loved us and we can show the world that this Christianity thing is real. So much of the time we're almost embarrassed now of all the things that are going on in, the, in, in, the, in Christianity. You know, you see things that happen in the name of Jesus and we're like, Ugh, man, that's, that's, that's something. You know, buy this holy water, it'll heal you, you know, or just send me, send me $10 and, and God's a seed. I'm saying, I'm not saying to do this. You can try it, but um, <laughs> send me $10 and it'll be a seed offering and God will give you back tenfold. Because we need $3 million to build a new building. Well, here's the thing, and none of that's true here, but here's the thing. I believe, have you heard that? Anybody heard that? The seed offering thing? I always want to call in and say, if you need $3 million, give me 300000 if that's true, if the seed offering is true and you can give, if I give $10, $10 to you and I'll get 100 back, give me 300000 and God will give you your $3 million. Problem solved. Right? Yes. Amen. I knew I could make you like me again. God bless you. I love it. Now go get a prank with the people that you're mad at. All right, so. 
But yeah. here's the thing. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. And we can show this kind of love to Him that changes yeah, things. Yeah. And it shows people that being a Christ follower, being a Christian, <coughs> means something. And it shows something far different than maybe the caricature that has become Christianity and, and, and that people want to make fun of and change and, and make it seem like it's something else. We can show our neighbors, our friends, those that, that know they've done us wrong or we know we've done wrong, we can show them true Jesus love through the Holy Spirit working in us. And that is far more effective than just about any other thing that we can do. Amen? When we seek to reconcile, it puts legs and feet on the fact that we are truly Christ followers and full of the Holy Spirit. And it's a beautiful thing. So if you've got something that you're harboring, go make it right and let yourself be free to worship our God without anything in between you and the Savior. Except showing his love to others. Amen? Now, the next thing, it frees us. Uh oh. Okay, can you just flick it forward there? I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. There you go. Reconciliation frees you from unnecessary stress. Have you ever, have you ever, I hope the grudge is hard work. Being mad at somebody, being mad at your neighbor. How many of you have? The perfect neighbors. Anybody? Yeah. If you were my neighbor, you wouldn't have that. I have three teenagers living under one roof. That's the destruction personified, right? How we haven't had the cops call on us, I'll never be quite sure. But, but none of us have perfect neighbors. But you know what we have all around us? Our gospel opportunities. In those difficulties and those things. But what happens a lot of times is we start to hold grudges. We get mad at those that are closest to us. We get mad at those who are dogs barking or whose car is too loud or, or who, you know, isn't considerate or is, is, has unreal expectations or whatever it is. And it can cause unnecessary stress in our lives. It can cause us to, you work hard, but, but, but holding a grudge is hard work. Being angry is hard work. Free yourself from that. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you and give you opportunities to, 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 to reconcile yourself with whoever it is you may be angry with. And guess what? You're free from that unnecessary stress. It's freeing. The chains fall off because we are doing the work of Jesus that we were created to do, that we were transformed by Him to do. When we're reconciling, we're doing God's work. So, Reconciliation for you. Hey, there it is. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who's taking you to court. That's a good idea. This takes it a few steps further. But settle matters quickly with your adversary who's taking you to court. Do it while you're still together on the way. Before, in other words, before you, as you're going to court, do it while you're still together on the way. Don't wait till you get in court. To do it, is what he's saying. Or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So, if you have done anything, let's back it up away from court. But if you've done anything to rip somebody off, to hurt them, to rob them of anything, to do anything where they could come and say, from a legal standpoint, from a correct standpoint, from a justice standpoint, you were wrong. You do whatever you can to make that right. You do what you can to make that right. Because if not, you're going to get exactly what you deserve. You know? So if you've wronged somebody, make it right. If somebody's wronged you, do what you can to be honest with them and make it right. Now, there's a story that I have. It's, it's a contrasting story. I may, I may have told you this before, because I don't have so many stories. I'm not very old. So, anyway. A friend of mine, I'll, I'll, tell, you my, I'll tell you the negative first. I was in McDonald's. I like McDonald's. I really like McDonald's. I know it's terrible. I live in Bend. I should just eat tofu and veggies and I, but I, I like that pink slime stuff that makes it burgers, oh man. Anyhow, I like double cheeseburger meal, I mean a two cheeseburger meal, no onions. 
Good stuff. All right, so anyway, I was in line in college, in college, and I was in line in the drive-thru. And I got my $5 meal. I'm pulling up to the thing. I give them a $20 bill. <clears throat> give them a $20 bill. The person hands me back a five. And I say, no, I gave you a 20. And they said, no, no, no. I, you gave me a 10. And I said, no, I gave you a 20. I want $15 back, not $5 back. And they said, no, no, you gave me a 10. You're a liar. And I said, I don't know if it escalated that quickly or not, but we got there eventually. All right? So I say, hang up one second, I'll be in. And so me, knowing I was correct, knowing I had all the authority, I walk in there, strut my stuff, just like Jesus would do. And yeah. I walk in there, and I say, count the till. Count the till. I'll be waiting right here. And then come back and hand me my $10. Just, I mean, you can see Jesus all over it. <laughs> and they're like, no, I'm not counting till. I'm like, yes, you're counting till. Here's a trap. Welcome to our church. <laughs> <laughs> you can die today. You know, I'm not so sure that you go to heaven. Um, so they go and they count the till. And about 10 minutes later, I'm sitting there and all of my knowing I'm going to be correct. And the manager comes out throws $10 at me and says, get out of here and don't come back. Whoa. I said, wrong again. I'll be back whenever I want to come back. <laughs> well, you can't do that. You know? Anyway, beautiful story from my college days. <laughs> and I had the right to do it. It was my money. It absolutely was my money. You know what? That wasn't kingdom living. That was Trevor living. That was me exerting the justice that I had the authority to, to exert and being, being arrogant. And did I get my 10 bucks? Yeah. But they, they, they had no idea. They, they could see that every day. There was nothing different about what I did. There was nothing unique other than, than I, I was all arrogant and thought I'd done something pretty funny and, and, and all that. Here's the contrast. A friend of mine's dad, same exact week, at least close, within a month, my friend's dad, we were at McDonald's. His dad was a pastor from North Carolina. He was probably 55 or 60. Same exact thing happens, only we're inside. Same thing, exact same thing happens. He hands him a 20, they give him back a 5, different, different, different restaurant. The same, almost the exact same scenario. And the guy said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but, but uh, you... You gave me a change for a 10, and I gave you a 20. And she said, no, 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 you gave me a 10. I know you gave me a 10. He's like, no, I know it was a 20. Can you give that back to me? And she says, no. She said, you're not telling the truth. Or something along those lines. She, she, offended, she accused him a little bit of, of, of not, not being honest. He said, you know what, ma'am? He said, I, I apologize. He said, I apologize. You know what? Maybe I made a mistake. He said, I'll tell you what. When you go to count the till, if it's not even, if, it, if it's over $10, just take that and do whatever you want with it. If not, you were right. And if so, you can have that. And, and you know, I just, I just want, it's not worth having a, a, a bad name over, over 10 bucks either way. And, and I'm a pastor, and he went over and gave her a track, and he did all this stuff. You know, in North Carolina. And I was like, huh. <laughs> that may have been a better way to handle it than what I did. You know what he did? It was subtle, but it was he he was a lot more like Jesus than I was. When conflict arises, when anger arises, remember our treasure isn't here. Our end game is. We are children of the kingdom of God. We are children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We have been taken care of forever. Our eternity is secure. All the riches of heaven are ours. We are joint heirs with Christ. Let's show the world that that means something when conflict arises, 
when there's a need of reconciliation, when anger pops up, let's show the world Jesus as Jesus showed himself to us. And let's ask God, through his Holy Spirit working through us, to allow us to be a conduit of love and affection and un unworldly uh, grace and mercy as he showed us. Let's allow him to show it through to others through us. Amen? Amen. That's what this sermon is getting to. Dearly Father God, I just ask that you would help us. Lord, I, uh, I thank you for the godly examples that we get to see and we get to glimpse your kingdom on earth through, through people that are led by your spirit and who, who allow you to show through. And God, so many times in our life, it is a growth process. It is, it is a process of sanctification. It's a process of transformation. And God, I just ask in each and every one of our lives, as conflict arises, that they would even see those as opportunities to allow you to work through us to show the reconciling work of Jesus Christ on the cross in little glimpses of acts of kindness through those who have been touched most personally and beautifully by you. That others would glimpse and feel that same love. God, help us to be about your work here on earth not about ours. Help us to realize our treasures in heaven, not here. And help us to realize that we can live out for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we don't have to worry about our own little kingdoms. God, help us to live in a kingdom way, full of your Holy Spirit and showing your love. In Jesus' name, amen.